The number of coronavirus cases in Africa has surpassed 2 million, including 48,000 deaths. Africa's infections and deaths make up less than 4% of the global total. But the World Health Organization has warned the continent is heading toward a second wave of infections. Africa has not experienced COVID-19 infections on the scale that experts had predicted. But the threat of a new wave has raised fears that the continent is not out of the woods yet. 20 countries have had coronavirus spikes in the past month, and that's for a range of reasons. In most of the affected African countries, the rise in new cases is coming from workplaces and family gatherings. And of course, we know that there are several um, political elections coming up in a number of countries, campaigns going on and gatherings as far as that is concerned. And some existing challenges have mounted. Pregnant women in Zimbabwe now have limited access to medical workers since many facilities are closed. That's in a country with an already weak healthcare system. There used to be um, hospitals providing caesarean sections for difficult births. But then with COVID now, one getting transport to get to the hospital was a problem. So what happened? A number of women were struggling to give birth. And by the time they arrive in hospitals, they actually are fatal. They die. Adapting to lockdowns is not easy or affordable for many across Africa. For example, not every student can do their online research from home. We don't have the Wi-Fi at home, so waking up daily, each and every day, early in the morning, to go to Kenya Human Rights Commission to access the Wi-Fi there, it's a challenge. The moment I get to class and I get access to the internet, I usually have time to to uh, like uh, to cover up what others have learned. News that a vaccine is near will be welcomed as much in Africa as elsewhere, although there await logistical challenges relating to how it is rolled out. I am now joined by Professor Yap Boom. He is with Epicenter Africa. That's the research arm of Doctors Without Borders. He's a specialist in epidemiology and public health. Uh, welcome back to DW News Africa, Professor. So Africa has now recorded 2 million cases, but, but I want to point out that France and Russia have just the same amount, and these are individual countries. Uh, their population sizes, respectively, right? 150 million uh, in, in Russia, 67 million in France. This dwarfs Africa's 1.2 billion. So what is your explanation for the reason the continent seems to be doing better than most parts of the world? Thank, thank you for inviting me again. I think it's important to remind ourselves what do we mean by doing better? Is it in terms of number of cases? Is it in terms of number of deaths? So definitely in terms of number of, of cases, we need to detect more and more of our, in our population using the different testing uh, that we have. But in number of cases, we have a different population. I think we've been mentioning that uh, long and on. We have a population where the mean age of our case is around 38 years old. That's what we see in Cameroon, in DRC, in many countries, which is different from what we are seeing in most parts of the world. In Europe or in China, it was around 60, 60 years of age. And we know that the people who are the most at risk of having severe condition or even mm. dying are the older and those having comorbidities, which is not fine as much in her population. Okay, that's it's interesting you point that out because, for example, in Europe and in North America, the the second wave has been deadly. Uh, what would be the dangers of a second wave in Africa then? The, the, the danger. I think beyond the sanitary impact, we also have to look at the economical impact because if we have an important second wave, as you've seen in Kenya, for example, if we have much more cases than uh, the first wave, then it will have an impact and country may have to go to lockdown. And we know the impact that it has been having in our population. So our population, instead of dying from COVID, they might be affected by lack of resource and some of those people mm. may be in, in a condition where they cannot survive.
Okay, Pro Professor, there is um, there is much ex excitement right now about the uh, the efficacy of these vaccines uh, that are being developed. But tell us about the the potential challenges that we might face in distributing and administering the vaccine in Africa. Just from your experience uh, with the Ebola uh, vaccine, for example. You know, during the, the first time we were using the Ebola vaccine, the, that vaccine has to be used on the minus 80 degree. And then we were using it in three countries. And it was a very big challenge. Now, we have to roll out this vaccine in all African countries. We definitely need to choose which vaccine is adapted to our environment. So we talk about the logistical challenge, the cold chain. We would rather go for a vaccine that can be transported at the normal temperature. But also we we'll need to look at efficacy. 90% of efficacy for a vaccine, for a disease that affects people like us, where we know that our probability of dying is like 1 or 2%, that's not, that's not a lot especially if we don't know the severe adverse event. So I think Africa will be more, let's say, picky in choosing which vaccine should work, in, should be used in our population.